Hello again. Hi there. You know what I was going to ask you? What? How many hours of TV do you watch a week? Mm, about four to five. Well, that's rubbish. How so? Well, when people come up and ask you in the street how many, you mm. know, people do the surveys and that sure. kind of thing, they ask you how many hours you watch, people generally say four to five. Fair enough. When a point of fact, they're watching 50 at least. Well, people generally, as you say, are crazy nuts for watching that much TV and you'd never catch me watching that much TV in a week. So you're claiming four to five? Four to five tops. Okay. Tell me what you watch. Well, I'll take in blind date, uh -huh. religiously. Uh -huh. One flick a week in Barry Norman. Well, I'll give you that. That is four to five hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you watch Star Trek? Oh, every night. Mm -hmm. Every night? Seven nights, yeah. That's seven hours right away. Okay, I concede that. What about Animal Hospital? Oh, <laughs> yeah, all those furry little animals. Uh -huh. Can't miss that. Do you watch the news? Yeah, 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 I watch the news. And yeah. the big doubler at the weekend? Yeah, plus so the that... news at ten. Right, yeah. so it's four and a half hours there right away as well. Right, you got that too. I'll give what you about that. the Simpsons? Well, who doesn't? Who doesn't watch that? Okay, okay what about uh, football? Yeah, a couple of games a week. A couple of games at 90 minutes a week? Yeah. Changing rooms? Mm hmm. All the soaps, apart from Emmerdale, obviously. Well, obviously, right? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm. What about Gladiators? Mm hmm. Gladiators, watch mm -hmm. that. Big Breakfast, all the fly on the walls, Casino, the boat one, all that, yeah. Family Fortunes? Mm hmm. Family Fortunes, the cooking programs, the Channel 4 double header, 15 uh -huh. to 1 in Countdown, I watched that. Right. Mm -hmm. And you told me you watched that Desert Corner thing the other night? Yes, I did. Okay. Let me rephrase the question. Mm -hmm. How many hours of TV are you not watching? Mm, about four to five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Piffle, the celebrity game show that aims to set tongues wagging. I'm your host, Grant Marshall. I'll be postulating, pondering and calling the shots and also making sure that our contestants here don't say anything too saucy. OK, let's meet the team. And our celebrity team captain is Tom Lewis. Tom presents the weather on Grampian TV. What's the forecast like there, Tom, my old friend? Scattered laughter, Grant, followed by brief intervals of guffawing. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. OK, Tom, who's your piffle, patter, punter partner for today, then? Well, Grant, my piffle, patter, punter partner today is Jean Gillespie, and Jean is a nurse, and she works in Stob Hill Hospital in Glasgow. And I understand you recently got married, Jean. Yes, uh, and we got married in Jamaica. Irie, I, Yaman, Irie, <laughs> Yaman. <laughs> so I uh, understand that the uh, wedding didn't go without a hitch. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, do tell us, Jean. Well, we got married in Jamaica. No sooner had we arrived than uh, Brian fell and twisted his ankle. Twisted his ankle, very, very. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, anyway, we get to the hotel and he had to go to his bed upstairs in the hotel room. So I went downstairs to the dining room on my way to get my tea because I had not twisted my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got a lovely bit of fish done in coconut and I, I lifted an extra pudding. Wow, enjoying your honeymoon there, eh, Jean? <laughs> no, the extra pudding was for Brian. It was a cherry pineapple thing. I knew he'd love it. Anyway, I, I got upstairs back to the room and when I got in, and two robbers had broken into the room. They turned the whole place upside down. Stole her clothes, all her money. The walls were caked in blood, and um, there's Brian lying in the middle of the bed, shaking like a leaf. They'd slit his throat for your ear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tremendous! <laughs> okay, Jean, let's play piffle. <laughs> <laughs> The mates have got a swatch of ribbons. You need ribbons a day now? The ribbons will not be around to Tuesday, sweetheart. <laughs> Is that you? Ah, that's us. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. And you are? Me, I'm me, Ronald Villiers. Ronald Villiers, uh, right. And who are you with? I'm with Wadikam and Pump. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Now, did they uh, tell you what we're doing here yeah, today? They, they, they briefed me all about it. It's about right. uh, cartoons and that, and Yes, it? that's right. It's right. a cartoon. It's uh, Mickey the Mole right. and Sammy the Seagull, right. and you're auditioning for the part of Sammy the Seagull. Seagull. Right. Now, I'll tell you what we're not looking for from Sammy the Seagull. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want him to be like Donald Duck. 
All right. Old Daffy Duck. All right. Yes, yes. Fine. In fact, I've got a little. Oh, right. just have that. What do you oh look like? at that. Yes. Uh, that's great. Big beat. That's and fun, the, kids. That's right, yes, right. in the beat. Gotcha. But you, as the artist, will be bringing your own voice right. to the character. Right, yes. my own voice. Yes. Right, yes. That's all right. fine. So we'll have a little bash at it. Right, well, no yeah. problem. You well, might... another thing that's probably worth explaining to right. you is that Mickey the Mole is a little bit of a gangster type. Right, he's a gangster. Yes, he's a gangster type. Right. And Sammy the Seagull. Right. And Sammy the Seagull, right. he's sort of more of a, he's sort of naive and innocent. Right. And, and stupid, that kind of. No, 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 he's not, he's not, he's not stupid. No, no, he's not stupid, no. no, no, no he's... Right. Do you want a glass of water? No, I'm all right. Right, right. Ready to go? Um, yeah. OK, right. Do you want me to turn the microphone? Right. Hey, Sammy, what's the weather like up there? That's really good. <laughs> right. Absolutely pelting. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, that was a little bit, um, a little bit, um, camp. Oh. Yeah? Camp, right. Yeah. Just remember the great cartoons. Uh -huh. The voice is always pushed to the edge. Right. Yeah? No, you want me to do a cartoon voice? Yes, cartoon voice would be nice, right. but don't hold back. Just make it up. Just make it up and right. let yourself go. Right up to the edge. Right up to the edge, that's right. Right up that's to the it. edge. Right, we'll try again. Ready? Okay. Hey, Sammy, what's the weather like up there? <laughs> Pumpkin! <laughs> Where? Right, yeah, that was a little bit like smoking, wasn't it, from the mask, the Jim Carrey film. Well, oh, I've never, I've never seen that. Yeah, well, it was a little bit. We don't want to use a catchphrase that's already had oh, a lot of success. Was that his catchphrase? Popularity. Soaking. Yes. No, no, no. It was smoking. It's just right. that you did it in the same style. Oh, did I? Yes, you said soaking right. in the style of smoking. Right. It's right. just. Um, right. Let me do it again. Right, I'm ready. Hey, Sammy, what's the weather like up there? Absolutely soaking wet. Pow, pow, new in. It's all right. We're off. We're off. We, we, thank you. Right. You right. did very well. Thanks, thanks, very thanks for coming in. Fucking me! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so then I get another doctor in. A woman doctor, I. She starts to take the bandage off my leg to have a look at the wound. Oh, it's totally scabbed up. It's like the tap of lasagna. <laughs> I meat lasagna. It's all yellow and purple and brown, but with a kind of crust. So the doctor is a right kick at it, and it's a good job, because it's all that whiffy way, you know? <laughs> it turns out it's totally infected. Aye. Seemingly, I've not to poke the lavy brush down the bandage to scratch at it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. My scab's infected. Aye. Well, she's gave me some cream to shift the pus. <laughs> to shift the pus! <laughs> and, nah, I can't hear you. Nah, I'm, I'm losing the signal. I'll speak to you later. Oh, you two. No, I'm not saying it. Somebody might hear me. <laughs> right, bye. <laughs> Mr. Gallagher, isn't it? That's right, aye. Yes. <laughs> Sit down. So, you wanted to discuss a business loan? Yes. Well, would you like to talk me through it? Well, basically, it's sports socks. Sports socks? <laughs> yes, my plan is to sell sports socks. Just sports socks? I'll be sticking pretty exclusively to the sports socks, yes. <laughs> you have a premises in mind? Yes, uh, Argyle Street in Glasgow. Uh, Glasgow. Right, so is it a freehold or a stall within a complex? <laughs> no, no, it's Argyle Street itself, mate, you know. A couple of pits outside of Marks and Spencers. Will you not get trouble off the council or the police? No, 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 you see, with my business partner, Davey, you know, keeping the edge here, I can pretty much scarf under the pits, you know, if you, if you get cloaked. Mm. Will be a business strategy? Yes. <clears throat> sports socks. They are your sports socks. Two for a pound. Two for a pound. They are your sports socks. Well, that seems fairly low risk with no appreciable overheads. OK, well, we'll uh, get the paperwork rolling. If I could just offer you a wee bit of advice concerning diversifying your product base, though. What is that? Gas lighters. <laughs> Do you love it or do you love it? A genuine Rennie Macintosh tea strainer, if you will. Oh, Gary, it's an utter dull and totally tosh. Oh, may we, James, and I trust you'll be coming round for your tea in the Glesky style. Does the Pope wear a mitre? <laughs> now, tell me, Gary, where'd you pick it up at some little antiques fair? Indeed, I did not, James. I picked it up doing the barrows. Oh, the barrows. Well, it was tagged at £90, but I managed to haggle the stall holder down to 85 Well, that's the beauty of the barrows. And he threw in an anthology of Robbie Burns' love poetry. Oh, I love Robbie Burns. 
I thought murder policeman, what a bargain. Oh, and the stall holder, a real Glasgow man. A Glasgow ticket. Absolutely, full of the banter. In fact, as he wrapped them, he looked me straight in the eye and said, I saw you coming. Oh, the Glasgow banter doing the battles. <laughs> oh, Scotland, Scotland, proud nation one and all. Scotland, Scotland, was like me off the wall. Where else in the world would anyone else put up with Barnaby Paul? Scotland, Scotland, the variety bell of the ball. Variety acts from all over the land are here for you tonight. To make you laugh and make you cheer at all that Scottish shite. So sit you doom and cootie in and see some funny things. If it just needs only to be your cup of tea, the crankies are on after kids. Okay. Oh, you're in. Oh, you're supposed to come and meet me there, Jack. We were going to go and look at that new Econo body shop. You know what happened to you? I got this new PC this morning. That's me hooked up to the internet, eh? I've been on it all the morning. Who you want me one of them? You're going to need to drag yourself into the 21st century, boy. This is where it is, eh? This is a vibe. It's happening, you see? That's me connected. And get this. I've got a new girlfriend in Baltimore. <laughs> girlfriend? Baltimore? We'll never see you, Jack. Well, you're not be coming to the bowling anymore. You've still not grasped it, have you? <laughs> see with this computer here? I can talk to anybody in the world, you see. I can even find you a girlfriend, get you some of that cyber sex, you know. Ooh, cyber sex? What's that, then? Dirty talk on the computer, you know. Virtual humping. <laughs> I had some this morning. That sounds smashing. Give a shot now. What's oh, doing there? I've got a woman on at the moment for Florida. Right? Kathy's her name. Right? Watch yeah. this. She's a librarian. Let me see. Victor, my friend, is here. He would like a word. Oh, oh. Victor! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, let us in there. Hey, hey come, come on. on a shot. What do you do? Just type them? That's all you do, just right. type them. Yeah. Where's the H key? I'm going to type hello, you see. Uh, where's the E? Oh, come out the road. You'll be oh. there all day at this bloody rate. Right, I'll type, you dictate. Right. Type, uh, hello, Cathy. Oh, Is it your nookie me. you're after? <laughs> I'm not typing that. Oh, no. Because you're jumping in too quick. You can't do that. You've got to take your time to do it, you see? Oh, well, ask her about the weather, then. Right, what's the weather like? Oh, uh, <laughs> hey, bikini weather, eh? Hey, see, yeah. she's ganting for it, Jack. I told you she was ganting for it. Type that. Type Are what? you ganting for it? No! <laughs> Just type it out. Come on. There you are. She's saying aye. Well, she's asking you if you want it. Well, this is it, isn't it? Right, what do you want to say? What do you want to say, Victor? Well, I'm, 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 a, I'm a wee bit uncomfy there, Jack, you know. Eh? Hey? Well, here's me about to get my knack king, and you're sitting there right in the middle of it all, you know, <laughs> typing, like a virtual gooseberry. <laughs> well, there you are. She's asking you if you want your oats now. Look at that, you want your oats. Come on, are we getting into this or no? Will I type back? Oh, turn your head away there and type I. <laughs> Oh, I can't decide which one. They all look so tasty. Let me help you, madam. Wank, good guy, wank, wank. <laughs> Keep moving, he'll rock the arm. Is... I'm not going to make it. Look, look. Get a grip of yourself, will you? All we got to do is keep moving. We get down to the beach, we get on the boat, and we're out of here. Put your arm around me, Nick. Now keep moving, will you? Come on, Gary. <laughs> No, 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 no. Listen, this is stupid, John. I'm a dead mate. I'm a dead weight. Save yourself. Are you sure? I'll see you, Gary. I'm sure. John. What? Are you going to leave me? Well, that's what you said. I'm going to the boat. You're not going to drag me to the boat? Well, that's what you said. You said go on without you. Save yourself. That's what you said. How long have we known each other? Oh, you want me not to leave you? You want me to drag you down the boat? Yeah. Look, Gary, mate. What did you say? Leave you, then. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Look, Gary. This is a war, mate. Look, they're bombing the train line. The enemy's right on the bloody tail here. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to leave you? Or do you want me to drag you down the boat? 
I'm not sure. I'll tell you what. I'll pop you in the back of the head. Bang, bang, it'll be all over in a couple of seconds. You won't feel it. Bang, bang. Oh, no, 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 I don't fancy that, mate. There's got to be another option. Well, unless a bloody taxi comes, we haven't got any options. Have we? <laughs> Go without me. Go on. <laughs> Maybe I can do that. Maybe I can help. Just go before it's too late! Gary, you'll die in a hero, mate. I'll see ya! <laughs> <laughs> right, Betty, uh, memories of VE Day. Take us back to that time, your recollections. You, you see, Charlie was due back on the Friday, so Rose and I was doing the Tuesday afternoon. Well, we'd need where to stay, but we had an idea that what we'd do is go to a, a dance hall and pick ourselves up a couple of fellas and go home and stay with them, you know? Uh-huh, yes. Uh, go on. See, to get fellas any lassie knows, you've got to dress so suggestive and look as if you're going to put out at the drop of a hat, you know? <laughs> now, Rose was never one for wearing knickers, and well, everybody knew I just wore mine to keep my ankles warm. <laughs> Hang out, she used to cry us, but we weren't caring. Uh, Betty. Oh, sorry, son. Tea time show, I know you tell me. Th that's OK. So, Betty, the celebrations themselves, a happy time for one and all? Oh, I heady days. I'll never forget them. I mean, one time I picked up this Irish fella and, well, he'd managed to miss out in the draft on account of the size of his feet, you know, his big feet, and we teased him something rotten about that, cos you know what they say about a man with big feet, big feet, big... Betty! <laughs> they weren't rang either. Like a big Clyde's daily was. He sorted me and Rose out. Oh, we were absolutely ruined. I've been walking about like Groucho Marx for days. So, so your husband, Betty, uh, the man of your dreams, your love, was returning home to your arms. Tell us about the meeting. Oh, well, it didn't start off too well, cos I was too early on account of these Frenchmen we met. Celebrating? No, riding, son. <laughs> oh, but wait, that's not the best yet, cos Rose starts to complain that she's feeling itchy. And right enough, I'd nearly clawed my front end off myself. <laughs> if we got to meet my man and Rose and I were absolutely hoaching with the crabs. <laughs> Run with them, so we were. <laughs> Thanks, Betty. Thanks. Of course, I smit at him with him, I know. Hi, Ford. It's Billy. Listen, I was just like... Ah! Ah, quicksand! <laughs> <laughs> it's good being on the telly, isn't it? Oh, 40, it's great. Yeah. Mm. See if you're only on the telly. Uh -huh. Name something else you would like to be. Oh, good question. Squid. Squid? Yeah, I'd like to be a squid. <laughs> well, you see, a squid doesn't have to tolerate the bores of the ocean, you know? A squid uh. could be talking, swimming along, talking to a trout. Uh -huh. you know, the trout's going on and on about the dangers of fishermen's hooks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Squid gives him a blast of ink from between his butt cheeks and just goes, Phew, your pad is minging, I'm out of here. <laughs> That's a nice thought. Hello. Did you know that God is... <laughs> you could use that at parties if you're cornered by some guy. Just give him a blast of ink and go off to the kitchen. You know? No, when I asked you what else you wanted to be, I didn't even mean something for the animal kingdom. I meant, mm. you know, what would you like to be? What kind of job would you do? Oh, an inventor. Oh, an inventor, that'd be great, wouldn't yeah, it? Right. You could yeah. seek out the world's ills and invent something to fix it. Everybody in America wants to be an inventor. Right. Oh, those rocket guys, the guys invent the rockets in their backyards and all that. Yeah, right? they get a rocket kit out of Omni Magazine or New Scientist Weekly and yeah. build it in their backyard and, and launch pay, themselves into space. They pay 40 or 50 grand for the privilege too. Crazy. But we're not the kind of guys. You'd never catch us doing something like that. No. <laughs> Here's a name with a built-in snigger. Who's that? Clive Sinclair. You can't, you can't say that without no. sniggering. Clive Sinclair. <laughs> I like Clive, though. Oh, Clive Sinclair. Now, there's always a place for Clive Sinclair on this show. That man is a true performer. Oh, he certainly is. You know what he's working on at the moment? What's that? A flying car. Oh, good luck to him. Mm -hmm. What was it he invented again? He invented the Spectrum 28 computer. Mm. I mean, that made him a lot of money, but he's had some turkeys since then. Oh, yes, plenty of turkeys. Mm -hmm. What was that thing, the TV? Well, they had a little miniature TV in the mm -hmm. market, but Sony had them humped because they had a wee tiny, toty TV. 
Sony kicked his butt. Yeah, because he'd a big TV like a size of a house brick. Couldn't carry it about. No. And then what was the other thing? The bike? Oh, he came up with some sort of... Oh, the C5. 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 Yeah, C5 was no good, was Disastrous. it? Disastrous. You never saw them in the shops. No, you did not. But you see, he's moved on from the C5 to another bike. I'm not sure what it's called. We'll call it the Sinclair C6. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. No, it's the X bike, he's called it. That's right, with yeah. the kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. Now, this makes the C5 look like the penny farthing. <laughs> now, what this thing does is it stores energy from coming down hills, right. and then when you're going up a hill, you flick a switch, and up you go. You don't have to pedal. Wait a minute, that's exactly the bike, kind of bike I'm looking for, oh, obviously. I mean, I don't like pedaling. Who likes pedaling? You're going past people up that hill, and they're pedaling like lunatics, and you're just gliding past them with your feet up on the bar. So let me get this right. This is all stored inside a dynamo. That's right. And it just powers you yep. without pedaling. That's right. So you build up the energy coming down the hill, and you use it going up the hill. But it was a flop, because he launched it in a really bad country. Where? Holland. <laughs> Tonight at 11.15, continuing our season of tartan briefs, the harrowing tale of tuberculosis-ridden Clydeside in The Doctors. <coughs> My God, Willie. You're the colour of clay and your head's the size of a Jaffa orange. You can't go on last. We'll need to get you seen to... <coughs> Tartan briefs. Look on the bright side. At least they're short. OK, Richard, back in ten seconds. Oh. Put your buddy fag up. <laughs> Cue music. And it's the hi-fi we're starting with. OK, no problem. Now, we, we need two minutes on the hi-fi before the next product, so do you think you could manage that, Richard? Yes. And you're on. Hi there, welcome back to QSC. You join us for Hi-Fi Time, and uh, we've got some terrific pieces of equipment here on the show for you today. Not least of all, the uh, Venga 5-stack CD system Saracen. here, the Saracen CD system. Uh, <laughs> Venga products, of course, coming a little later on in the day. What's coming up? it's Hi-Fi Hour. Well, it's uh, Hi-Fi Hour right here on QSC. Uh, lots of things to see, not least of all, of course, the... Um, compact display. Compact display, which is a little cracker. I was playing with it earlier on. Couldn't get it out of my hands. And the three-for-one remote and control. And, of course, uh, the two-for-one remote control. Let's talk three about this one, uh, system. <laughs> here. Uh, of course, it has the base uh, on the front there, which is great for the boom-boom-boom that the kids like so much today. Go back and say three-for-one. And, of course, uh, the five-stack CD system is on three there, for one, Richard. as I mentioned earlier on. And, uh, of course, say three for get one. a load of this, karaoke. <laughs> Uh, for all those parties Richard, at the weekend. Richard, go back and say three for one remote well, control course, and not two for one. We'll if get you're in on your own and you uh, fancy a sing song. Oi. Now, um, Oi. the uh, matte black finish that it has here, of course, is uh, compatible with any uh, software machines of, of today. The Richard. things you would have in your house is going to fit in. And, uh, say three for one. No, where else? Where are you going to find uh, such a system? Other than uh, right here on uh, QSC. Say three for one, Richard. At this price. You 75. Go back and bloody say it. In my ear now, of course, they're telling me 75% of all the break, or I will come stock. down there and, and I, will I will kick your gun. And uh, so if you get your hands on this, please do uh, give us a call uh, on. Uh, I the, will the, kick the, you into the middle of next. <coughs> <coughs> three for one! <laughs> wow, that was great. You know, lying here like this makes me think about how close we've become. I don't know. <laughs> Is that a fish fan? No. Fish fan's Tuesday. Figaro! 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 Has your agent phoned you yet? No. I would have said something. Wouldn't have. What's that you're reading, Nancy boy? Who are you calling Nancy boy? I'm calling you Nancy boy, reading that Ponzi Nancy glossy magazine. Oh, and you don't read magazines now? I read men's magazines about motors, engines, cigars, naked birds and I. I read them and all, but right now I'm reading this, right? What is it? Hello. <laughs> Garbage. Garbage or no, I'm reading it right. What for? I might get a sniff of some acting work. This tells me who's up to what, who's working and who's no. How do you mean? We'll take that skinny bastard out of that West End musical. That Cliff Richard face twat. Aye. What's he up to? He's dating that anorexic bit Affy Corey. Mm, I'd love to knife they two. Me and you know. all. <laughs> Who's that? That's that poof that's made all the records. Oh, I'd love to batter that punch in about the heat with an iron bar. Aye, batter him right in the thrapple with a bottle of Tizer. 
Right, you want to squint at my copy of the stage? Aye. Right, there you go. Give your hello. There you are. Right. Nay no bother. Cheers. All right. I see they're auditioning for Puss in Boots and Kirkcaldy. <laughs> Pish. <laughs> Wank, wank, good guy, wank, good guy, wank, wank. <laughs> now just take it easy and go from the start. OK. Around 9.30, I parked my car on the drive, as usual, and I noticed that my bedroom curtains were closed. My husband's away in business, so there'd been nobody in the house all day to close them. Well, I never thought any more of it, but when I got into the house, I noticed it was really cold. It was freezing. Well, the back door was open and I could hear noises coming from somewhere in the house. So I was really frightened, so I went in, into the kitchen and uh, I got one of the big knives and went to the bottom of the stairs, took my shoes off and I started to go up the stairs really slowly, step by step. When I got to the top of the stairs, the bedroom door was closed. So I reached out, I grabbed the handle uh, and I opened the door and there was, there was nobody in the bedroom. But I could feel a presence sort of behind me. Um, so I turned round really slowly. Hey! <laughs> Collins, what are you doing? Sorry, Sergeant, I couldn't resist. This woman's had a very nasty scare. She's come in here for help. Hey, what do you think you're playing at? Sorry, honest. <laughs> well, that's enough. This is a very serious case. Enough of you larking around. Sergeant! I'm sorry, Mrs. Fielding. I apologise for PC Collins' behaviour. And so will he, Collins. Sorry. Now, Mrs. Fielding, if you'd uh, care to continue. Right, well, as I was saying, I turned round to see what was behind me. And there was a man standing there, a, a huge man with big tattooed hands, and he was wearing a mask. What kind of mask? It was a clown's mask. Was it anything like this? <laughs> <laughs> Nice cardigan. You too, fella. Mm. Ah, the traditional end of show cardies. Mm. Mm. I've got an inventor for you. Who's that? Victor Kayam. Oh, v Victor. K now there's a name. There's mm. a name. Mm. Eh? Victor Kayam was the master, whereas Clive Sinclair was merely the pupil. Yeah, I like that thing he invented for up your nose, the nose clipper. You could also clip your ear hairs with it. Up your nose and your ear. Up your nose and your ear. Embarrassing but genius. Yeah. And you know that every single year come Christmas time, Victor Kayam's going to be on our TV selling his brand new product. In 2008, he'll be there at Christmas. Hi, I'm Victor Kayam. Buy my new Remington 9 blade. Fantastic. I'll be first in the queue. The first blade introduces itself to the hair. The second blade comes along and whisks the hair away. The third blade whisks away the bit of stubble that the second blade failed to whisk. And the fourth blade comes along and pours a little aftershave down the hole where the hair used to be. I'll queue for that. <laughs> you see, the thing is, Victor Kayam's an American. Mm -hmm. You know, and they've got catchphrases in America. What was his catchphrase again? I liked the product so much I bought the company. That's what Clive Sinclair is missing. That's why he fails. He doesn't have a catchphrase. We should come up with one for him. Like what? Hi, I'm Clive Sinclair. Don't laugh. <laughs> Good night. Godspeed. Oh, well, that's what I'm telling you. I tell you they're ready. You see, it's the thing about Baldur's, you've got to watch them all the time. You just know that. It's a mess they leave, you know what I mean? I mean, you're away at your work, you come back in, you've got a, you know what I mean, just a squad of mess to get ready. See, yeah, that's the thing about builders. My brother's a builder, and he says to me, you've got to be wide for all the moves. <laughs> chewing the fat, but I mean really chewing it. You know, chewing it. <laughs> <laughs>